But my name's Pat Michaels. For those that don't know, I'm the Chief Learning Mechanic here at Great Circle Learning. And today we are actually going to dive into learning about the new features of version 16. And exciting to say uh, version 16 actually is now live. So you're able to go in and download this right off the website. Um, we'll look at, I'll, we'll kind of show you where you can get to it uh, automatically um, in a little bit. But to kind of dot, you know, to jump in and get started, what we're going to be looking at today, we're going to look at several different features. I know I'm just throwing a whole bunch of stuff on the screen at you at the moment, but we're going to kind of go through this, kind of some of the bigger features up front, and then some of the, the more refined things that we've, we've added in. Um, but again, any point during this, you have questions, how do things work? Um, I'm happy to go over them. We are going to dive deeper into some of these sessions, like into like some of these pieces in individual standout sessions. Like this coming Thursday, we're going to dive into the guidebook design template, which is amazingly enough, the first piece that we're going to look at today um, in regards to these new features. So let's kind of jump over and take a look. Um, wrong one, that one. So we get the full, all of, we can see all of Word. But with Leader Guide Pro, the, what we're actually, so within Word, you know, for, I think most people here have at least used Leader Guide Pro, if you, but if you haven't, Leader Guide Pro is an add-in to Microsoft Word. So all we need to do is we come over to the ribbon and Word, select Leader Guide Pro, and the Guidebook Design Template. This is a new feature that's really about the process of getting your whole course structure in when we build out a Leader Guide Pro document. So best way to kind of show this is, kind of, you know, we're actually we're going to go through it twice, but first I just want to show you kind of how it works. So we're going to come in, we're going to start a document by clicking on the new button on the ribbon which then opens up our dialog box to start a guidebook. It looks very much the same as it would in version 15 of Leader Guide Pro, but um, we'll just call this new features. All right, at the moment, I'm just gonna build a facilitator guide. I'm gonna keep it as a default collection, right? I'm not worried about any of this at the moment. I'm just gonna click okay to start the whole process of building out. So at the moment, when you start building, this is very much the same as version 15, right? It starts pulling in all the individual templates and stitching them in together, bring in, you know, the cover page, the acknowledgements page, the getting started, all of those pieces. We're going to get prompted here in a moment to build out, you know, to save the document just like you would in version 15, right? Keep in mind, everything's being saved in your environment. We don't have access to it unless you choose to to share it with us. Now, the difference is in version 15 for people who've gone through this, we normally get a dialog box that says, are you ready to add images to your document now? Which is about bringing in your PowerPoints. In the guide, in version 16, what we end up with is after we go through the save, it brings up this dialog box about the guidebook design template where we have a choice, we can go through, we can select some different templates from the manual one, which is what uh, all the previous versions of Leader Guide Pro did, where it's got it's built in with a new module and a new lesson, and then you kind of add things in as you need it. But we've also given you some predefined templates based off of kind of time frame or how many objectives you're going through, right? Like a single objective, 60 to 90 minutes, it puts in one module with a series of lessons or the single objective with multiple lessons or multiple objectives. So these are already all built in. And then you also have the ability to create your own custom templates, which is one of the features we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about that in the session um, on Thursday. But for right now, I just wanna showcase what this does. I'm not gonna update anything else. I'm just gonna choose this object, you know, choose the single objective. And when I click okay, what ends up happening is it finishes up the creation of our facilitator guide, 
but it takes all the modules and lessons from that design template and it automatically lays it into our document. So, and then we're gonna to get to a point where it then says, do you wanna bring in images now? Which we're not gonna do at this moment. I just want, at the moment, we just wanted to kind of show you what we got just by using that guidebook design template when we get your guidebook is ready. If I zoom, zoom out and I'll say, I'm just gonna jump over to my table of contents. Notice it put in that whole core structure based off of the design template, guidebook design template that we used, right? And so that was just bringing it in without making any edits on that dialog box. So let's look at it real quick as if we go in and we start a guidebook. I'm going to build one more. Just give it a number. Coming through, just you know, quickly setting this up again, let it build out. But we're, I want to show you what we can do on the actual design template dialog box to make this process even, you know, I guess, even simpler for you. As this is building out, does anyone have any questions? So we're going to get this dialog box here in just a moment. Hopefully. Here we go. All right. So we already kind of talked about this. On the left-hand side, right, we can go through and we can choose the type of objectives that you wanted. So at the moment, I'm going to just choose this single objective, right? And if we look over here in this middle section... Right, so if we look in this middle section here, notice we've got a module, content module, which are basically fully left justified, and then indented in would be, these are our lessons, introduction and present and practice and debrief and summary. What I could do here is I can actually highlight the text that's in here, right? And I could, you know, instead of being a content module, I could go in and type in the name of the module, right? So let's call this building facilitator guide module. And in there, I'm going to have an introduction. I'm going to leave that alone. But maybe, you know, my second lesson that we've called that we've called present in this template, I'm going to call it two roles of a facilitator guide. And then I can update the practice and change that name to, you know, creating course structure. And maybe my debrief becomes importing PowerPoints and notes. So now when I go to build this out, it's gonna put in that module and all those lessons that I've named. And I could leave it here and build, build just those pieces. But if I wanna take it a step further, in the far right hand side of this template, I've got places where I can put in my module goal as well as my less, if I know the times of my lessons, I can put those in. I could leave them blank and it would just come in with placeholders in my document if I don't do anything. But in this case, you know, I could type in, you know, my module goal, right? I could highlight some of these and type in, put in some times. So I'm, I'll just put in times for two of them. But I could type in my times. And then when I click OK, So, right, so now, just like we saw before, it starts building everything out. But if you've noticed, it's been bringing in our modules, the module that we put in and the names of the lessons that we put in. Again, at the moment, I'm not going to add images to my document now. But when I'm done and I click OK, if I scroll down to my table of contents, now notice by taking a few minutes when that guidebook design template, and I've kind of chosen the one that worked best for what I was trying to build out, I've already got my whole course structure, right? I've got my, the name of my modules, 
in my or the name of my, in this case name of my module i've got my lessons already in place and if i now navigate to this page right so if i jump to the module page notice it's already brought in the the objective right because i typed in that goal in that in the fur in that the, the far right hand side it's already put in information about timing because I, when I had inserted those, you know, when I put in, I said my first lesson was five minutes, my second lesson was 12 minutes. That's already in there. And now, if I wasn't bringing in PowerPoints, I could just start building out, you know, inserting content blocks where I needed them and start building out my materials. Or if I had said, yes, I have slides, I could bring those in at that moment. So what questions about the guidebook design templates? Don't, don't be no, shy. it looks great. Yeah, it looks a lot easier. Yeah, I think it's, it will make it a lot, from, from our testing, it made it where it's, um, it's, re, it's really helped reduce the time for creation. And it's also made your guide, made gut people's guidebooks a lot more easy to navigate. Actually, I have a silly question. Sure. On the landing page of that, the graphics, we would obviously have the ability to redo that front page graphic, right? The You're talking about the... The blue squares and stuff. Yes, and that's actually one of the items um, you're talking about this page here, right? Our cover page. Yeah, yeah, yep. sorry. Landscapers are here. <laughs> Yep, so these, um, one of the items we're going to touch on right at the end is we're going to show you some of the updated cover pages. But just like in version 15, everything, all your cover pages, you know, it's a template within the collection. So you, know, you can kind of pick and choose if you like one of ones that we have and customize it or completely bring in your own. You, you have that capability. All right, so let's, we've got, love that when we usually import a PowerPoint, the sections in PowerPoint are used to create the modules. What happens in this case? Great question and a great segue. It's like, it's like a big market tease. So that's actually what we're going to talk about now is about, you know, the, the changes that are now happening when we import PowerPoint slides based off of this new guidebook design template. All right. So, I'm gonna let me pop back over here to my desktop. All right, I'm not gonna build, just for time purposes, I'm not gonna build out another guidebook. We're just gonna bring in the slides into this book. You're gonna see the same process. Um, let me, I just need to get this out of slideshow mode. I'll point out, I have a power, I have a sample PowerPoint here. Right, it's got some slides. It has some notes. Right, so you, this is this is what we're going to use to build from. All right, so in this guidebook, you know, we're going to use we're going to go under special and we're going to do add to bring in PowerPoints. This would be the this is the exact same if what we're gonna see is would be the exact same as if when we got that dialog box says, do you wanna add images to your document now? By saying yes on there, it does the exact same thing as clicking add in a guidebook that's already, you know, if we've already put the structure in but haven't brought anything into it yet. So, you know, when we click the button that says, are you ready to add images to your document now? This is the next dialog box we would see. Um, or by clicking add, it does the same thing. But so now we're seeing, we've got a dialog box showing us, here are the PowerPoints that are currently open. So I'm gonna choose my smart goals one. If the PowerPoint wasn't open that I wanted, I could choose get PowerPoint. It would open up a dialog box to navigate to the PowerPoint file you wanted, and then it would allow you to move to the next step. But in this case, you just highlight the, the slide, 
We click OK. Now, what you're going to see, this, the dial, some of the dialog boxes are a little bit different. Um, we've tried to narrow them down or shorten it, lessen the amount that you would see to make it a little bit easier. And on it, you'll notice on all these dialog boxes, um, there's an instructions bu button. So if you were to click on this, it would give you the text help for the dialog box that you're on. But basically, we're now it's just a different layout. But you're, you know, where are we putting our slide image? Is it going into column one, going into column two, going into column three? And then based off of where we put our image, we determine where we could put our notes. So let's say we'll put ours into column three. You know, image in column three, our notes into column two. If I didn't want to bring over my notes or there weren't any, I could choose that. Um, one of the other changes in version 15 is we've kind of taken all the stuff about image quality and what are we transferring over and kind of just put it behind an options field. So if you don't want to worry about it, you can just use the, the defaults. But it's there if you want to get into it. Just again, trying to narrow, you know, shorten up the amount of dialog boxes you need to go through. And so now when we click OK, Leader Guide Pro is actually now scanning that PowerPoint file that we've selected and it's bringing in images into the next dialog box where we're going to able, be able to assign our slides to the, our course structure. Um, so what we end up seeing, and this is the new look, and we are going to do a whole session on the whole workings of PowerPoint in version 16. Um, that one will actually be going on, uh, I think it's the 23rd. It's not, so it's, we have one this coming Thursday, and then we have one two Thursdays from there. Yeah, so the 23rd. But coming back to this dialog box. So on here, notice we've already put our whole course structure in. And this is kind of going over to, you know, to the message in chat where we were seeing, right, we've now brought in our whole course structure. So that's what we're seeing here in the first column. In the second column is scans or images of all the slides that are in our deck. And in the third column is allow, or the third section is showing us where it's allowing us to assign, you know, type in to assign slides and assign them or showing what slides are assigned to a specific lesson. So how this works, to assign slides, you first select the lesson you want to assign them to. Right, so we can't, we have to assign slides to lessons, not to modules. But if I, with introduction highlighted, I can either go in and type a number like one to two over in this assign and review box, or better yet, I can just click on the slide image, right? If it's, if it's just one, you can click on it and click assign. Or if it was multiple ones, I can hold down shift, you know, click on one, hold down shift and click on the, you know, the last one I wanted out of a group. And it would basically highlight all of these. So in this case, I'm gonna assign slides one and two to introduction. And then for my next lesson, so two roles of a facilitator guide, you know, let's see, I'm gonna go slides three through five and I'll assign those. And if you notice down on this section, right down here, it is showing with when you have a slide or a lesson highlighted, it will show you what slides are assigned to it. Right? So if I click back up into the introduction, you notice one and two are assigned. This one's got three and five, or three through five. There's nothing currently assigned to this one. Right? So it's a way you can kind of keep track. And I can go through and just assign the pieces I want to go to what. And then once I've got everything assigned, now I just need to click done.
and it starts pulling all that its information in. There's a dialog box that just popped up on my other screen that says PowerPoints have been successfully added. I would click OK. And now, if we look at our documents, you know, into my introduction, slides one and two went, and into my two roles of a facilitator guide, you know, slide three, four, and five are in, in there along with their notes. And so into that, get, you know, the, the whole course structure that we set up using the guidebook design template, we now assign the slides to those specific lessons. And so... Is there an undo button if you mute? If you um, mis make a mistake. Meaning to, un like, you chose to put the slides into a different one? Right, like w I goofed and put the right slides in the wrong one. Is there an undo button? I didn't see it. No. <laughs> so, I mean, there's ways to do, I mean, really the easiest way to do, like, let's say if I put slide three into you know, the lesson above where it should have been, you know, went into lesson two, but it should have been in lesson three. I can still go and do, you know, basically insert the slide, put a slide content block into the other lesson, and then, tr you know, move the information okay. down or do a replace to bring those in. Okay. So there, there's ways to do it. Um, you know, we'll all, we're going to show you a, a, a kind of a, a quick feature about when you're working with content blocks that may also help you. So there's ways to do it, and that's kind of more stuff we will co cover in the working with PowerPoints session towards the end of the month. Um, yes, and as Nancy points out, you do also have, the, if you've assigned things and the um, you, you haven't, imported everything in right you haven't let's say i went and assigned slides one and two to lesson one and then i did three through five to lesson two but i actually wanted slide three to go up into that first lesson i could clear those assignments there's a button to do that and you can do that before you import all the slides but like once you've already imported the sl once they've hit the actual documents you're gonna have to manipulate it in the document all right so, what do you guys think of that feature? And I will take silence as in you completely love it. Um, I think it looks great. I have a question regarding uh, guides that were maybe created in an earlier version of Leader Guide Pro. Are these features compatible in pre-existing guides? Yeah, I mean, what you'll want and what you'll end up doing, um, the, the, the short answer to it is yes, it will work. Because at the end of the day, it's a Word document that was built out with Leader Guide Pro. There are certain things that, are, that work a little bit differently um, at the collection level, which will make more sense when we look at a few of the, the next features. But all you would end up having to do is go in the in the existing facilitator guide, come up and choose attach, which is the paperclip on the, in the start section. And attach does two things, but when it, when it comes to a new to an existing leader guide pro document, it allows us to apply either a new collection or an updated collection to it which would then give you the features that are coming in version. You know, it would make sure the document that it was, the document was receptive for these new items, if that makes sense. All right. So we've looked at the first two items. Next one I want to talk about um, is going to be, we are, we're, it's now called, they're now called IQs or IQ and there's IQ bundles. In version 15, these were actually we considered we called it the insertable script task pane. Um, let me. I'm actually going to go to this view so we can see it a little better. On. 
on the ribbon, or what you're actually going to see now, with when Leader Guide Pro version 16 opens up, there are two task panes that automatically are opens unless you, uh, you, you change it in your preferences. One is this navigation pane, which is on the left-hand side. This one here. The navigation pane here. The other one, which is the one we're going to talk about, is this is the insertable or the IQs, which used to be called the insertable script task pane. So these are, you know, and I, I know many people have used these in the past. Here, I'm just going to expand this out a little bit. These are, you know, the way we can within a content block, right? I can go in and I can put in, you know, a series of um, basically visual cues to help break up the material. Right, so let me actually, I'm gonna just insert a, a blank content block. And while I'm actually putting this in, notice a couple things. When I just inserted this this content block, this one wasn't, you know, it's, it wasn't a, an item on our list that we're going to kind of talk about, but we're seeing it here. We've got this set up currently now by default. Whenever you put in a content block, if you weren't, if you hadn't highlighted text, it automatically gives you these kind of guided prompts. Right, and we cut you kind of. You can also see it up here when I inserted that, ins uh, put in that IQ. That is a feature that if you don't, you know, it's there. But if you don't want to use it under Leader Guide Pro Preferences, so into Parts, go into Leader Guide Pro Preferences. There's actually you're going to now see here the new item in here is called the the Design Assistant. This is where we can we can change a few things up, um, like that navigation pane always being open when you launch Leader Guide Pro or the IQs pane. If you don't want those to, to be open, you can uncheck them, and they only open when you click on click on them on the ribbon. Um, if you don't want to use that guidebook design template, which I don't recommend because I think it's very powerful, but if you just wanted the old way to do it, you could just click. Um, you know, you could click to not use the guidebook design template. Um, we have an updated, we've updated the modules and lesson templates as well, or um, when we go to insert those, so you can turn those off. But this, this last one, highlighting content prompts, if we uncheck this, that will turn off where this kind of these yellow prompts come in. But in here, you know, if I was just to click into it, you know, I could just type in whatever text I wanted. I actually got into the right so it would remove if you if you clicked into it which I didn't do in the first part right I could go in and just add in the text that I specifically wanted so the IQs coming back to this we've got a whole series of those they, they've gotten we've, they've gotten some updates in terms of um, the, the icons being used with those and now we're going to look at the icons in a, in a few minutes. But so we've got these. Um, the timing still works, right? So if I wanted to put in, you know, on this, on slide six, we're gonna spend five minutes. I could type in five, click on the clock, and it would give me the time marker underneath that content block. But, so I can, I can do those, right? I can just, add in these these items where I need them. But the new one of the new features in Leader Guide Pro is what we're seeing up here called bundles. So we've got IQ bundles and after this we're going to look at content block bundles. These are completely customizable. At the when you launch Leader Guide Pro this is something that there's nothing assigned to it until you go in and customize it. Um, so what the way these work, 
when you select, like I went in today and I just assigned some. So I set up that my first bundle would be, you know, we, we've got a series of process. Like I always ask a question and then I'm listening for a specific answer and then I, I, we do a debrief, right? If that's my process, I could set those up and I could assign them in the collection. And then when I click insert selected bundle, where my cursor is located, and here, let me just get rid of this so we can kind of see it a little bit easier. Where my cursor is located, I click insert and selected bundle. It will run through and it will bring all those items in. And now I could quickly go in and put in my question, right, in the text that I was looking for or what I was looking for. And then, you know, the activity that we're running. And so it would, you know, we can quickly build all those items out. So IQs is just our rebranding of the insertable script task pane. We just think, you know, IQ is short for instructional cues, um, but it's really the bundles in there that are, are, are very powerful if you've got a, a specific way we, you build out or specific actions you generally take. Hold on. All right, so I think I think I saw some questions come in. Will the collections I've I create in a previous version of Leader Guide Pro be compatible with this new version? If you've got version, if you if the collection was built with version 15, the system will make updates when it's installed. Uh, you will see the the you will see the draw the your list of co you know, your current collections in the list of custom collections underneath, um, you know, well, here, let's look at it. So if I was to build out a guidebook, right, and I choose my collection, if your collection was built out with version 15, all the updates will be kind of, it will, the system will, will update those collections and bring them into, to, version 16 for it to work. If they were built with version 14 or 13 or earlier, um, the, it will not automatically, you, you, could, you could do some work in them to make them work. It, to be honest, it's gonna be easier just to rebuild them. Um, there is a whole new interface, which we're not gonna go into today, but within the collection, you know, under parts, manage collections, there's, especially with managing the icons, which we will look at right at the end, the, um, there's an interface to make that a lot simpler. Um, let me just see. I think that was uh, the questions there. Any, any other questions before we jump to content block bundles? The, do the, can the IQ settings be shared amongst a team, or do you have to do those individually every time? Great question. It is because it's part of the collection, you can set those all up, and then it is shared across the team. Awesome. So you'll notice on here, there's actually, I think it's 20, 25. We've got 24 slots up in the top portion you actually have room for a 25th one as well. Um, for the instructional queue bundles to work, they do have to be part of these 25, right? Think of, you can customize these, get the 25 the most popular ones. And then there is, and I'm scrolling down so you can see it over my head, there's the My Custom Instructional Cues as well that you can assign and set up as your own, as other ones as well. And so, you set them in one collection, and then that collection shared out with everybody. Now, everyone who's building has the it's it's laid out the exact same way for them, along with those bundles. So oh. you, you could say, you know, for that the new developer, you're know, like, all right, here's a, you know, when we do this type of activity or this item, these are the four steps we do. You can set those up as a bundle, so they now just have to click the bundle instead of necessarily remembering those four items separately. All right, so speaking of bundles, so we looked at bundles in terms of content or in terms of instructional cues. They are also set up, though, for content blocks. 
So let me do this. Let's come back over here. So content block bundles, instead of bundling your instructional cues, we can bundle our different content blocks, right? Like if we always do an activity and then we, you know, do a knowledge check and then we do a, you know, a question and answer session. You could set those up so you don't manually have to go and select activity, you know, I forget what activity, what I say, highlight or knowledge check and then um, question and answer. You can just come up and in the content block bundles, we, you have up to six sequences to choose from. And you'll see like on mine, I've assigned three of the sequences. And if you hover with your cursor hovered over it, the little hot tip box that pops up will show you what it inserts. So this one inserts a say this, a key points, and a question and answer. While this one inserts a PowerPoint slide, a key points block, and a workbook block. I just, in this example, I just chose some random ones. I'm not saying those are bundles you have to use. But, so if I was to go in and insert this first sequence, right, my cursor's currently underneath, you know, at the bottom of slide four. So when I click on this, it goes through, it puts in a say block, it puts in a key points block, it puts in an ask block or the, whatever ones I've assigned. And now I could go through and start building out those materials. So again, if you've kind of got, you know, specific types of actions that generally happen one after it, another, the majority of the time set up it as a bundle. So we can just, you can click, put those all in and start working. And on those one-offs where you just need the say, say block, just choose a say block or a key points and a question and answer. You know, you could insert them individually or you could insert, um, you could insert the whole bundle and then just delete out the one you didn't need. It just depends on what works better for you in terms of um, development purposes, you know, how you, how you like to work. That's great. Questions on bundles, either at the content block or instructional cues line. Okay. All right. I have a question. Sorry. Sure. Oh, it's all right. I think I thought it saw it come up in the chat and it's disappeared. So I just have the same question as someone else, maybe. From a best practices standpoint, are the cues and the content blocks, are they functioning in the same manner? It's a great question. So in one way, yes, right? Because at the highest level, we want to build material that we want a guidebook that a facilitator can quickly glance down at, get the information and be back up in front of the camera, back up in front of the class, right? So the more we can use visual cues, you know, a facilitator sees a specific icon, they know what they're supposed to do, right? You're driving, you see a stop sign, you know you can you, you know you have to stop but you can still have a conversation with the person in the car change your radio station all of those things so at the at the fundamental level yes at the functional level of leader guide pro there's some slight differences so an instructional cue right so i'm just going to go put one of these in so let's say i put in an ask this this ask, right? So this instructional cue, which I'm gonna highlight, we have that type of ask, and then we have a content block ask. The instructional cues strictly are visual aids. When you see this, this is kind of what you're doing. Think, I mean, for lack of a better term, think of it's like an, a, a learning emoji, where a content block, there is a lot of Fun functional items behind it, I can choose to go through and say, fr you know, I can hide specific content blocks out of a document. I can extract, you know, from a facilitator guide, a participant guide and bring over all my, my ask blocks or my question and answer blocks. I can bring over my key points blocks. I can't do that here without additional steps of manually marking up my document. So it just, at the, it gets, at the highest level, yes. 
they're they're visually there to help make delivery of information easier. In terms of development, there's some there's some differences, and you know we'll we'll actually I'm gonna it's actually a blog article that I'm working on um, to kind of go over that as well. I hope that I hope that helps. It does. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So the, these next, we're now kind of getting into some more of the, a little bit more of the minutia of some of these updates in version 16. Some of them are there just to really make your life a little bit easier. Um, you know, they are, some are, are still very powerful, but we're going to look at um, one of my, the simplest ones that I just find super helpful. Um, for those who are aware there's a function within Word or a keystroke, Alt, Shift, and then the up or down arrows. And what this allows you to do, you can move content blocks, you know, or table rows of a table. If I hold down Alt, Shift, and upper, you know, and use up or down based off where my cursor is. I actually need to get off my the drawing tool, but Alt Shift. Oh, if I hit the right right ones, I can move content blocks up and down by using the up arrow, down arrow. And so we can. I'll put in another content block just so we can see this better. All right. So we've got a computer block, and let's do one more. We'll do an activity block. So. You always had that if you knew that that hot that keystroke, right, or that hot key. But on the leader guide pro ribbon, in the content block section, you now have an up arrow and a down arrow. Right? That's what we're looking at right here. What those do is the same thing as that hot key. So maybe this exercise or this computer block. I want it to actually be underneath the ask block. All I need to do is get my cursor in the row that I want to move. And if I click the down arrow one time, it moves it down once. If I click it down twice, it moves it down twice. Right? I want this activity block to be above my, my slide four block. I click into it, click up, and it moves it up one. So it will then, it jumps it to where it needs to be in the doc, you know, based off of that. So very, it's a very function, it's, it's very helpful when you need to start kind of manipulating the things around and so you don't have to go and delete out content blocks and, you know, insert them and copy and paste all those type of things or remember, you know, remember that hot, key, the, that series of hot keys. So again, not, you know, it's not like, it's not, you know, I guess fundamentally changing the way like the guidebook design template is, but such a helpful tool, especially in the editing and revising stage. Um, so that's the one I, one I just, I love it. Um, I know it, I'm being a nerd, but I, I do. All right, so let's talk about this navigation pane. All right, we already looked at the instructional cues pane, but the navigation pane Again, this is on the left-hand side of my document. It opens up by default, you know, if you've got it selected underneath that design assistant. Um, if you didn't, and this is the same for instructional cues, if you want to, if they weren't open and you want to launch them, they're located in the insert section. But so when we, you know, if I was click on the navigation pane, it opens it up and it gives us several different things, right? If I was like the first, like if I was to click on table of contents or training at a glance, it will jump me right to that, that location in the document, All right? So if I'm working my document and I want to get back to my table of contents so that I can quickly navigate over to a different piece, right? By clicking on the page, you know, holding down control and clicking on the page number, I can do that, right? I want to get to back to my training at a glance, I can jump there, right? 
the next module, next lesson, by, by clicking on this will take you to those pages. Um, it didn't take, I was on, it was on the same page, I just was zoomed in, that's why you don't see it. But as I, you know, we can click on those. We've got a repeat find. So if you were, you know, trying to go, you know, going to different types of activity or different types of content blocks to go through it, this will helps you so you don't have to keep doing, you make it, you make your choice once and you can do that. But one of the nice things on here now is it shows you what content blocks are in your document. And this list is generated every time the navigation pane is, re, is reopened, which is why we have this choice called refresh list. Right, so if you notice right now, I have an activity in audio and computer and key points and slide and Q&A and time. So let's go in, I'm gonna put in a breakout block, right? So I insert it into my document. Notice it's currently not in my list. But if I refresh my list, which basically refresh the list basically closes it out and reopens it, you'll now see the breakouts in there. So if you're ever just wanting to see what what are all the content blocks that are in my document, the navigation pane's a great way to do it. Which again is kind of goes back to the question: what's the difference between an instructional queue or an IQ and a content block? We've got a lot more power behind content blocks. But this, they, you can also, by clicking on one of these, like if I was to click on activity, it will run through the documents to where that activity block was. And of course, I, let me go to a different place in my document so that we can, you can see it better. But let's, so let's do key point. So if I was to click on key point, it jumps to the location in the document where that key point is. If I was to click on it again, if there was another key point, it would go to it. So we can click on these multiple times to go to different things, All right? So if I was to now go to audio, right? It jumps to me to that location in my document. So it's a nice way, especially again, at the editing and revising stage of, I need to get to a certain location you know, I know it's, it was in an audio block or whatnot. You can click on those to quickly jump to where you need to be. All right. Questions about that navigation pane? All right. So we just got two last ones we kind of want to look at. Um, one is a new feature about the graphics cues page. So if I jump, let me pull this back up. All right, so when we're looking at the graphics cues page, and this works if you're using, you know, our standard graphics cues page. Like if you've customized it, this, the feature I'm gonna show you will, won't work. Um, but this graphics cues page kind of shows you, you know, here's every single content block that is currently available in Leader Guide Pro. Right? If we look at our navigation pane, these are the only ones that are currently in our document. Now, in the past, in version 15 or earlier, if you wanted this to kind of just show what was in the document, you would manually have to go through and delete them out and then you, you spend a bunch of time kind of manipulating, getting all the, you know, the, the headings over the specific icons. But under special, on the ribbon, so in the control section, go under special, there is now a graphic cues show only those that are in the document. So if I was to choose this, I'm gonna zoom out real quick it will rebuild my graphics cues page and only build out with the icons that are in my document. It takes a moment, it basically goes and it rescans the entire document. Um, and then depending on how quick this goes, it's always based off of 
you know, are you running a Teams meeting while you do this or in Zoom or when's the last time you restarted your computer, all those type of things. Um, but now, right, it's been rebuilt and it's only showing the blocks that were in here. But I don't have to do, I could do this, you know, at different times. So let's, you know, let's go in and let's add in a different block, right? I put in a raise hand. I just chose some that um, I know would stand out. But I just, you know, I, we've added in some new in, new change, you know, added in some different content blocks because of edits or revisions. I just click on it again, and it rebuilds it with all those pieces. And again, how quickly it does it, how many things are running on your system. You know, running a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting definitely eats into that while you try to do these type of things. So just, just a way to kind of clean this up, you know, for what you're specifically using, if that's what you choose. Um, once you click on it though, this is the build, like there isn't a, you'll notice there isn't an option to bring back the full graphic SKUs page. If that was the case, what I would, if you wanted that, I would, basically just build out a separate document and you know copy that page replace that this page with the one that was built out in the new one um, but that is the graphics cues which brings us to the last piece and we're going to do um oh one more question before sure. we move on yeah. when you do that on the graphics piece is there oh how could you just consolidate? It's a lot of white space that creates and just from a paper perspective to just kind of drag that, you would just kind of do your spacing, right? Because it is a Word doc to help kind of bring it all together in one, on one page. Absolutely. I mean, you okay. may have, I mean, it's because, yeah, you could come in and, I mean, come back here. Like if, you know, if you wanted to, Delete out some of these rows. All right, I, I could come in and I could delete out a bunch of the rows. All right, I, you know, do those type of things. Maybe you're putting in stuff like, what is that, you know? Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. I just, yep. I would have... I mean, something to Basically, think about. It should have gone on your prior page, just again to try to minimize all this white paper. Well, if you want, if you wanted to bring that up into a into a, a different page, yeah, right, delete that out. Oh, okay, you you can move. Yeah. Great. All right, thank you. I mean, I if you were to go that route, I wouldn't do that until the absolute end. Because so, what ends up happening if you go this route with that, when this is not a separate page? doing this, rebuilding this again, could create some issues on this other page, right? So I would get everything set up and then just at the end, consolidate it down. All if right, that, got it. If that makes sense. Yep. You know, some, if you're also using IQs, and right, so the IQs, there aren't, um, right? IQs we really can't automate, right? There, they're basically an emoji. But you could go through and, you know, set up a little format. And this is, you know, you could customize out kind of the graphics cues page and put in a place to show what instructional cues are in there. And you could go in and also provide people, you know, here's are the instructional cues that you have. But this, that would be something you mainly would have to do. But if, that, if you were concerned about that white space, that would be another area, another avenue you could go into. So, all right. With that, let me, we're gonna go into the last piece, which is kind of, we're gonna just quickly look at some of the cover pages and some of the icons that can be updated within this. All right, so, I am going to, let's, we'll first look at the icons. 
in a leader guide pro or in yeah it went in word when you are up for doing it and I, what i i don't recommend i recommend being on a blank document when you go to do this right save out your other documents but in the custom or in the parts section which says customize if we drop this down this is where we can get into manage the collections which opens up a task pane which we're kind of seeing again over my head but this is where we could come in and we could start modifying out collections or creating a new one or once we've built something out we could import it export it so then someone else could import it and again we'll do a whole session on customizations but I can come in, I'm just going to choose this default for now. There is, you know, once this opens up, we kind of get another task pane over on the right where we can choose what we want to modify. But we could come in and we could, let's say, you know, I could do my IQ icons, which opens up a, a, a dialog box where I could come in and I could choose to go in and change my icons. We're going to give you a whole reference sheet of the, the icons. I'm just going to unzoom this real quick. So if you click on this open LG Pro icons reference, I just, it opens up a Excel sheet, which did it on my other monitor. So I could come in and see all the different icons that are available to you in Leader Guide Pro. And we've got content block. You see down at the bottom here, there are three tabs. Content block icons, ribbon icons. So these are what show up, you know, if you were to look at, you know, the, you know, if I was in Leader Guide Pro and I was looking at what shows up in the drop downs for my content blocks, um, you know, in the, in those task panes, that's those. And then there's also the IQs. So you can see, like, if I wanted to update, you know, for chat, here's the ones that are in here. And so you'll see the icon, and underneath it's the name. So if I really liked, let's say this one, LGP19 underscore chat, I can come in here. And I could, you know, change over this name and click update, and it will update that icon here. Or if I wanted to bring in my own custom icons, you just browse to it. You know, it would bring in the bring in the name. You can change over the, you know, what text comes next to it, right? So if you wasn't chat and you wanted this to be one-on-one -on -one coaching. You could bring in the icon that you wanted, change the name to that, and update it. So you have access to it, but the big, you know, the big thing, just so you can see everything that's available to you, we've got this, you know, this reference of all these different icons. Um, so you've got those. Let me close this out. Same functionality for block and ribbon icons. Give it a moment to open up the dialog box. Right. We can now we can choose the activity or the you know the content block that we want out of the list. Right? If I want to change it, I could come in, put in the name I wanted, you know from that resource, or I could come over and choose what I needed from my own and make all those changes. So you've got that functionality here. So that's where you kind of get into all the icons to, to, manip to manipulate it the way you want it. Um, in terms of cover pages, with cover pages, I'm actually going to set this up here so just to kind of give you a, a real quick look i know we're right at the two o'clock hour um 
and again, we're gonna, there'll be a blog article kind of just going over the icons and the you know some of the collection changes. But you'll have access to. Did it open it? My word is just being a little slow for me today. I think it's Friday and it's just ready for a break. Right, so like here, here's one of the updated cover pages. Um, and so these, these are now set up in a way that you could come in and obviously these are, you know, I'm not saying this is the color scheme that you want. This one's, this one's tied to our cyan collection, but they're built in a way that I could come in And here, like, a, I'm just going to open up my selection pane. That I could come in and grab the different pieces. So, like, if I wanted to change the picture, all I need to do is come down to change the fill and go to picture. I can go into, you know, I'm just going to use stock images. but I could quickly change all of those things out so that you can you know, get a, a little bit, you, know, you can customize it to your look and feel, but not have to build out an entire you know, guidebook or an entire page yourself, right? So on this one, I, I want a different color here, right? Just, and this is where the, the selection pane come, makes it easy that I can kind of grab the pieces that I specifically want and and then right click and change the fills. All right, so in this case, that was the entire document. All right, not that that's an ideal color scheme, but you get the point is that you can customize these to get the look and feel that you want. So there's one of the cover pages. And again, next week, there'll be material going out kind of highlighting all of these things. Uh, let me see, can will this one open up for me? There's another one. This one's part of the colors collection. And again, I, you can click into these, change the fills, set the image, set the color so it meets your needs. So I, I think all told, I think there's, I think there's four, or five, four or five new cover pages. Um, plus, you still have access to the older ones. And then because you these are, it's a template, right? You can customize this to do exactly what, and exactly what you want. Uh, make it, give it the look and feel you specifically need. So those were all the items I kind of wanted to go over on about version 16 today. What questions, what other questions do you have for me? How do you upload the new version? So, I just, I didn't quite hear the question. How do you upload the new version? Okay. So, it is now available. Um, if you go to our website, right, so go great, greatcirclelearning.com. So, you know, there's, there's right at the top, there's a, a small banner about new release. You can see, you know, this is kind of just going over high levels, but ideally just come under products and just choose free trial, which gets you to the download page, which I will put into chat right now, just so you have it. You'll be able to download it directly. Our recommendation is that you uninstall version for 15 first. So go into your control panels. Um, right. So if I, Go into control panel. If you choose uninstall a program, find Leader Guide Pro and Leader Guide Pro version 15 on your list and you know select it. You know, I obviously I've got I don't have 15 on mine at the moment, but you know you'd select select the file, choose uninstall up here at the top. 
which would uninstall it, then you can install version 16. It doesn't take out your collections. It's just install, uninstalling the program itself. So any collections you've built, you, all of that stuff is still in the, you know, it's still on your system that Leader Guide Pro can read. Um, but yeah, you'll you be, be able to get up and running on that. Um, under the events tab, obviously this was today's event. Um, for those who are doing the free trial, we have a couple make up the most out of the free trial events coming out. Um, you can sign up for those. But here is you know the guidebook design template that's next Thursday. Um, we're doing another kind of do, redoing this again for people who couldn't make it today next. And then the other main event is working with power the new all of working with PowerPoints in version 16. So those are all the the items kind of coming up. But you know, dig in, get excited. We've got next week is next week's our release. We're calling oh I'm calling it release week. So we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff going out. Um, we're working on a whole bunch of um, courses to go through that will be loaded up on the website. Those, not saying those are all going to be out next week. You, you're going to start seeing those trickle in, but taking you through different processes of building and doing stuff with Leader Guide Pro built out as courses. Um, but if that's if no one else has any questions or comments, one last. Uh question and it was just something that went by quickly I was sure. uninstalling while you were <laughs> yep. and trying to keep up with you with your instructions when we go to the link that you put into the chat yep and we fill out the information on the right hand panel if we are currently already we we have this or do we select free trial no matter what yeah. or, or do we free trial are you talking about should you check free trial or upgrade software yes mark upgrade software it's really okay. on, it's that's more for information on our on our back end side but i would just mark upgrade software okay and then we're going for the 64 bit so for that's a great question let me just show for those that don't know there's two versions you know there's 64 bit and there's 32 bit and so let me share my screen again all right, so the way to tell if you're 64 bit, and let me just make this bigger. If you go Man, into. Your, are we 64 bit? <laughs> that's what we're checking. <laughs> if you go into your, you know, go into File Explorer. Okay. Go to your C drive. And basically, in the list of all the, all the folders, what you want to look for is program files and program files x86. Okay. If you have an x86, program files x86 folder, I do. you're 64 bit. If you right, only Nancy, have program files, you're 32. We're 64, bit. Dan, okay. Which when is I'm 64. <laughs> yep. Um, the, the, other, the only other thing with installing, you, just, you, you need to have admin rights on your system. Well, I did that last time without admin rights. Any other questions? I know we're about 10 minutes over, but. Pat, just one last quick question. Sure. When can we find the recordings either on greatcirclelearning.com or your YouTube channel for these meetings? Another great question. All right, so my, I'm actually going to try to get this edited right after this. So hopefully this will be up before um, by. I'm actually hoping to get it up today, but by Monday, this will be up on both my YouTube channel. And then you'll also be able, if you go under the events tab on the website, there is, you know, this obviously shows you upcoming events, but there's a button here for watch past events. And this is kind of broke. And we've, we've been working, trying to clean, you know, make this a little bit easier to, to get to. But it defaults to you know all the, the ones that are out there. But if you choose facilitator guides, the, you know we, we're kind of t starting to tag these, so you can get them down into you know into specific items. So you've got that, and then um, obviously you you could go to you know I'll also put it up on onto YouTube as well. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful. It worked. No one's in.
All right. Well, I'm glad everyone was able to come. I hope you have a short rest of your Friday and um, enjoy 16. You know, please reach out with any questions and hopefully I'll see you guys all on Thursday. Thank you.